Welcome back to Type 1 Diabetic Warriors. My name is Jim, and today I've got a good story for you. It's a long one, so you want to stick with us till the end. The topic is VX880. Oh, wait a minute. We don't call it that anymore. Vertex has renamed their main therapy Zemisla Cell. I even got it on the first try. Got a lot to cover. Keep it here till the end. You'll be glad you did. Our team is committed to bringing type 1 diabetics the latest medical developments to manage this disease. We also cover current medical advancements seeking a cure for T1D. If you value this content, please feel free to show your support by clicking on our homepage and hitting the link to buy us a coffee. Your support helps our team to research topics for upcoming videos. We thank you for your support. Latest update on the Vertex Diabetes Cure Zemus Lacell. 10 out of 12 people have already thrown away their insulin pens permanently. Can you imagine? No gimmick, no fad diet, no overpriced supplement promising miracles. Just one infusion of a drug called Zemus Lacell, made by a company you might better know for its name, Vertex Pharmaceuticals. If you or anyone you love lives with type 1 diabetes, you absolutely need to stick around because today we're unpacking the freshest data, the hidden hurdles, and yes, that inevitable price tag Vertex definitely doesn't want to talk about yet. Living with type 1 isn't just a challenge. It's a constant second-by-second -second math class. You're forever calculating carb ratios, adjusting correction factors, and waking up to dreaded 3 a.m. alarms. There's the ever-present fear of a low that could drop you to the kitchen floor or worse. Even with the most advanced pumps and continuous glucose monitors CGMs, roughly one in three people with T1D still experiences a seizure level low every single year. Think about that for a moment. That pervasive fear reshapes everything. Our jobs, our relationships, our sleep, our entire lives. We've been desperate for something beyond another incremental device, another slightly better gadget. And that, my friends, is exactly why a functional cure headline lights up every inbox, sending ripples of hope through our community. We're not just looking for better management, we're yearning for freedom. So what exactly is Zimis Lacell? At its core, it's an off-the-shelf allogeneic stem cell therapy. Now in plain English, what does that translation actually mean? Vertex grows massive batches of healthy, insulin-producing islet cells in a sterile bioreactor. Think of it like a highly sophisticated farm for tiny gut, life-changing cells. They then package these precious cells into an IV bag and ship them directly to specialized transplant centers. A relatively quick, 20-minute infusion seeds those cells into your liver, where they set up shop like a perfectly functioning mini pancreas. It's truly remarkable, because these aren't your own cells. Your immune system will, predictably, try to attack them. That's where standard immunosuppressants come in. The very same pills kidney transplant patients swallow daily. But here's the big, game-changing win. No donor organ shortage to contend with, no agonizing waiting list, and no invasive surgery beyond a simple catheter in your arm. It's an elegant solution to a complex problem. In the groundbreaking phase one half forward trial, the results were nothing short of astonishing. Every single full-dose patient hit the American Diabetes Association's gold standard A1C of under 7%, and critically, they stayed there. Their mean time in range did past 70%, a metric that many T1Ds can only dream of consistently achieving. And here's the kicker. 10 of the 12 participants no longer inject insulin at all. The two who still do? They've slashed their daily dose by a staggering 80%. While follow-up is only 12 months so far, the very first patient dosed in late 2021 is still completely off insulin today, a testament to the therapy's potential durability. What about safety? Neutropenia popped up in a handful of volunteers and two deaths, unfortunately, occurred. Still, an independent board meticulously reviewed both cases and ruled them unrelated to the therapy itself. Crucially, there have been no rogue tumors, no severe hypoglycemia events since week six. For context, the historical rate of insulin independence in cadaver islet trials hovers around a modest 30% at one year. Well, Vertex just tripled that. These aren't just good numbers, they're jaw-dropping. Now let's talk about the elephant in the room, immunosuppression. It's the trade-off. You're swapping daily insulin injections for daily pills, regular blood draws, and a constant vigilance against infections. It's a serious commitment. 
Vertex is of course racing to create hypoimmune stealth islets, cells designed to evade immune detection. But those next generation lines are still very much in the early stages, currently being tested in mice. Second, and this is important, the trial only enrolled adults with severe hypoglycemia unawareness, those terrifying lows that hit without any warning whatsoever. Broader populations, kids, honeymooners, newly diagnosed, a lot of patients, haven't been tested yet. So, while the initial results are phenomenal, we absolutely still need to see five-year durability data before anyone, and I mean anyone, shreds their insulin prescription in public. This isn't a quick fix for everyone, at least not yet. Here's where things get really interesting from a business perspective. Phase three trials are already actively recruiting across five continents. We're expecting readouts to land late in 2025. Vertex has confidently told investors it plans to file global marketing applications in 2026. What's happening behind the scenes? The company is retrofitting a massive 170,000 square foot plant in Boston, explicitly designed to crank out 10,000 doses a year. They're not leaning on big pharma partners for this. They want full control, full control of pricing, messaging, and data. Why? because they believe they have something truly revolutionary. Analysts are already whispering about a highly restricted launch initially, perhaps at just a handful of specialized transplant centers. Then we'd likely see a stepwise rollout, carefully tied to manufacturing slots. Think about CAR-T therapies for cancer, specialty centers, specialty pharmacies, and yes, a specialty price. This isn't going to be available at your local pharmacy overnight. Vertex hasn't floated a list price publicly, which is typical for a drug of this magnitude. But Wall Street models currently cluster around $300,000 for the one-time infusion. And that's just for the drug. You'll need to add another hundred grand, give or take, for the initial workups, the hospital stay, and that crucial first year of immunosuppressant monitoring. Insurance will likely cover the drug itself under the pharmacy benefit, while facility fees and follow-up care will hit your medical benefit. If you're on private insurance, be warned. Prior authorization will be brutal. Expect strict BMI limits, ironclad C-peptide proof, and meticulously documented severe hypoglycemia events. CMS, which governs Medicare and Medicaid, hasn't signaled whether it'll pick up the tab. That single decision could literally double or halve the real-world market for Zemus LaSalle overnight. Interestingly, Vertex is already hinting at outcomes-based contracts. If a patient restarts insulin within, say, two years, they might refund a chunk of the cost. It's a high-stakes gamble for everyone involved. So, when can you actually get your hands on this? Best case scenario for FDA approval is mid-2027. The European Medicines Agency and the UK's MHRA could potentially greenlight it the same year, thanks to the Innovation Passport Vertex snagged last March, which streamlines the regulatory process. The very first commercial doses would likely land in Q4 2027. But here's the reality check. It would only be available at maybe 15 centers in the US and a half dozen abroad. Broader access, think community hospitals, pediatric centers, is likely to slip into 2029 or even later. If you're outside the US, expect a one to two year lag while Vertex navigates the complexities of XUS reimbursement. There are at least two other companies with off-the-shelf islet programs already in phase two, and one of them is even working on encapsulated cells that could potentially dodge the need for immune suppression altogether. If those pan out, Vertex may have to cut its price or upgrade its therapy fast to stay ahead. The race is definitely on. If this is your first time hearing about Zemus LaSalle, hit subscribe and ring that notification bell. Vertex drops fresh data every single quarter, and I promise to break it down for you, completely minus the jargon. Next, the game becomes scaling production, simplifying the process, and, crucially, chopping down the price. Imagine this. A decade from now, newly diagnosed kids might receive hypoimmune beta cells right alongside their flu shot. Until then, we watch, we wait, and we keep those glucose tablets in our pockets, just in case. Drop a comment below with your biggest worry. Is it the immunosuppression, the astronomical cost, or just the agonizing wait? I read every single one, and the best questions often become future videos. Zemus LaSalle is not science fiction. 
It's a functioning, manufacturable, one-time infusion that has already freed 10 of 12 people from the daily burden of insulin. Vertex owns the manufacturing, the patents, and soon, the price tag. Approval could realistically land in 2027. Access will undoubtedly be narrow at first, and immunosuppression remains the significant trade-off. So keep your expectations grounded and your eyes firmly on the next update, because the finish line just moved from never to maybe five years away. Well, I hope you were inspired by that the way I was. I know there was a lot to cover there, but uh, that's a good thing. Things are moving along very rapidly. I was particularly impressed with the speed at which they are refurbishing a factory almost from the ground up. It's not brand new, but it's being refurbished in Massachusetts. They're dumping a lot of money into it to bring in the kind of equipment and clean rooms that they will need to meet all of the federal regulations to produce this therapy. Number two, immunosuppression. I think it's very inspiring that they realize that they are only gonna have a short-term window to come up with their own answer to immunosuppression therapies. And why is that? Because they've got all kinds of competition breathing down their neck. Competition is one of the main things in a, in a healthy economic system. So if they have a lot of people who are working on therapies that actually could derail them if they come up with their therapy, these other companies first, uh, because they don't need immune suppression. So believe me, after all the money that they have spent, they are well aware of this and they are working overtime to make sure that they rejigger their therapy really quickly so they won't need immunotherapy even if this gets approved in the next two to two and a half years. I hope you find that inspiring. We'll have another video for you here real soon on Type 1 Diabetic Warriors. Have a great day.